The uh, officer said, why do you want to talk to him so badly? And Roddy took his thumb off his chest and said, because he stabbed me. And the blood hit the uh, officer right between the eyes three times with each heartbeat before we all realized what was going on. Hello everyone, this is Bill Apter here at Legends of the Ring in New Jersey. You're, you're Bill Apter? Do, Sergeant what? Slaughter? I thought, I thought you were that other George guy. Oh, the George Napolitano. Yeah, yeah, I thought No, that. I'm, oh. I'm not George Napolitano. Everybody gets this mixed up. Yeah. One time I had to take a photo of Stan Hansen, me, and George, and write for Stan Hansen because he kept thinking I was George. Oh. George, Bill, Stan. Yeah, well, that was without, it. without his glasses on, Stan wouldn't know if you were uh, Mr. McMahon or Bill Adler. Unquestionably, yeah, yeah, young man. Yeah, so wait a minute, why don't we start off with this? Vince McMahon has announced that he's retired. Like, no matter what the circumstances were, we all thought he would be there until the day he perished. Would you yes. look out and tell everybody your feelings about that? Well, I feel that uh, he's still there. There's no way to keep him away. I mean, as far as his knowledge of the business, and it wasn't for uh, his knowledge, a lot of us uh, wouldn't be doing these things that we're doing today. And, uh, I wish him all the the best. He's always been a uh, a good uh, friend yes. to me, and then it became a boss, and then we came friends again. So it's uh, it was a nice uh, thing to have happen, and got into the Hall of Fame, and uh, he just uh, a, to me he was uh, part of part of my uh, life. The reason I'm sitting here talking to you, along with Harley Race, working for Harley Race. And, few others, Pat Patterson, Lord Alfred Hayes. Yeah. Uh, I might not be uh, on this camera right now. Well, you did uh, You did some incredible uh, wrestling in the ring. You, uh, the feuds that you had defending America. Right now, America is in, there's so much turmoil going on with Russia and Ukraine and the, the pipeline thing. What, what, what do you, when you read about all this stuff, how does Sergeant Slaughter react to this? Well, it, it makes me a little bit angry that uh, we're not doing more to, to help Ukraine. Uh, I know that we're uh, helping supply weapons and and all that, but you know when, when it gets to a point where it's, hey, we should have did that, when that uh, nuclear bomb might uh, go off, uh, we never know. Yeah. You never know yeah. with a guy like Putin. Have we ever trusted him? Have we ever... Uh, not uh, kept an eye on him. Uh, former President uh, Trump kept a pretty good eye on him and had a good uh, repertoire with him. And uh, now it seems like it's he's off on his own and, and uh, no one can control him. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right. Well, back to wrestling now. The days of the great USA thing when you turned against the United States, became a sheik for a little while, right. which was an interesting storyline. How did that affect your personal life? Well, you know, I just came off of G.I. Joe, yeah. and uh, I got the uh, call from uh, Vince McMahon. I, I watched uh, WrestleMania 6, Hogan and, and Warrior, and uh, I had stopped watching the WWE at that point because I was so uh, angry that they uh, couldn't work things out with Hasbro and I, yeah. that I could be at WrestleMania It's one. all business. Be yeah. in WrestleMania two, yeah. be in WrestleMania three, but I had to miss the first six WrestleMania, so it it made me uh, anti WWE, so I didn't watch the show. So one night, uh, about six years later, uh, WrestleMania six is uh, on a pay per view of my hotel room, so I called up, they put it on my room, I went down to have dinner, came back up just in time to tune into the match. And, what really amazed me was the production. The production, the last time I watched a show six years before that, they maybe had three or four cameras. Now here's a, a maybe a 16 to 20 camera uh, pay-per-view shoot. And I got a pencil on paper as Dear Private McMahon, uh, just watched your WrestleMania six, went through the whole thing, can't believe the production. Your production is, is in 
inferior to everybody. I mean, nobody could come close could equally, to what yeah. I just saw. Yeah. Hollywood couldn't even come close to that. And so I decided Sergeant Slaughter P.S., the match between the ultimate puke and, and uh, <laughs> the, the uh, <laughs> used to call him the, uh, uh, well, the, he, they were both pukes. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and I said, uh, P.U. on that. I put a big P.U. and uh, sent it off to him. About two weeks later, I get a call on a Sunday afternoon. I'm watching a NASCAR race, kind of dozing off. Phone rings up. Hello? Sarge? Yes. Vince? Well, there's only one Vince. Yes. There's only one Sarge. says, uh, got your uh, note. Appreciate the feedback on the production. Yeah, we've been working hard on it. And I appreciate someone like you seeing that, uh, how well it's going. And you're right, the match was a PU. Are you ready to go back to work? Wow. I said, it's funny you should uh, want to ask me. He said, well, you're done with Hasbro, right? I said, how would you know that? He said, I'm Vince McMahon. That's, that's what I do. He I know everything. So uh, I go uh, tell my family I'm going to have a, have a meeting with uh, Vince McMahon and going back to work and they're all excited I said I, I know Vince McMahon he'll take G.I. Joe Sergeant Slaughter and not only make him the real American hero but the real 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 American hero as only he could do so when I went to uh, Vince's house of course he had complete opposite ideas and he said uh, I want to put you and Hulk Hogan in the main event WrestleMania 7 sell out the Coliseum in LA. I said, great, that's great. Are you are you bo on board? I said, I'm on board. How are we turning Hulk into a, a villain? He goes, <laughs> Hulk, not Hulk, you. I said, me, I'm the real American hero. He said, not anymore. So uh, he said, go home and talk to your wife about it. He laid out what he wanted me to do. Yeah. He said, it could be pretty rough, could be dangerous. I want you to get there okay before you're okay with me. So I said, okay, but I knew right away that I wanted to do it. Wow. Yeah, wow. Just just to be able to get back in there and wow. wrestle the Warrior and, and Hulk and all, like, all the superstars of the WWE. And that's, that's the how crowds it, went crazy. They, 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 yeah. You were the number one most hated man back when we were doing the magazines. Yeah. Yeah. You were wrestling's most hated man. Yeah. But you had been hated many years before that in Jim Crockett right. promotions right. as well. But right. then you became... Sarge again. One of our reporters at Sports Kida asked me to ask you about an incident where Roddy Piper was knifed or something by a yeah. fan and you helped take him to the hospital. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, yeah. We were in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, back then we were all our, we all were our protection. We protected each other. Yes. There wasn't any police or, there were, there were a few police in the area. But Doug Dillinger of, was the police. We were, so we were watching Ivan cool off in the match. Uh, and uh, just standing there watching. And all of a sudden we saw in the hallway where they sell the popcorns and all that, uh, this gentleman was like beating his little girl or whatever she was, granddaughter or what it was. And Roddy said, I don't like that. So he took off. So I'm watching the match. and. Now I see Roddy having a confrontation with the guy, and the guy took a swing at him. So Roddy looked, at, looked out of the way, and then he picked up the little girl, made sure she was okay, and off he went after the guy. So I said, well, I better go make sure that everything's okay. So off I go, and by the time I got out to where the uh, incident happened, they had already gone back into the arena. So I'm following them. As soon as I got into the arena, the guy was down. Roddy caught him, got him down, and there was two police officers. One had a gun pointed at the gentleman's uh, head, and the chamber was going back. And the other older cop took it and said, don't shoot him, don't shoot him, we got him, we got him. So they got the guy, handcuffed him, and took him back to a room. And uh, Roddy said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. You know, talk to the guy. That's Roddy. That's Roddy. So Roddy goes to go, and I, I noticed his knife was laying there. So I picked it up and had a, a handle on it, and there was blood on it. So I 
just folded it and held it for quite a while in my hand and wanted to give it to the police officer. So while we're watching them interrogate the guy, Roddy kept asking the, the, the main police officer, can I, can I just talk to the guy? You know, soft. Can I, can I just talk to the guy for a second? Roddy, we got him. Don't worry about it. He said, no, no, I just, I just like to talk to the guy for a second. And finally, they, uh, after about four or five of those, the uh, officer said, why do you want to talk to him so badly? And Roddy took his thumb off his chest and said, because he stabbed me. And the blood hit the uh, officer right between the eyes three times Jeez. with each heartbeat before we all realized what was going on. So I put my hand on Roddy's chest and I tried to compress, you know, as hard as I can. I got his back and the officer said, he didn't go to the hospital. And Roddy said, could I just talk to the guy? <laughs> could, I, could I just talk to the guy? So he said, no, get your ass out of here. And so uh, Don Cronodal was uh, yeah. riding with us. I said, Don, grab our stuff and he just said the hospital. What hospital? Well, just follow us, follow us. So we got an ambulance and uh, we got uh, Roddy into the ER. So we park, park the car. So we go back in and we're waiting for Roddy to, get, to see what was going on. And here come a doctor. He said, are, are you with Mr. Toombs? And I said, yes, we are. He said, we follow me. So we went into the ER, there's lights all over the place. Lights everywhere. And there's Roddy laying on a, on a table, a steel table, uh, with his shirt off. And uh, the uh, police, or the doctor had uh, a little uh, band-aid on. He said, I just wanted to show you something. So he squeezed his fingers to keep the blood from coming out. And he took a kind of a scope or something like that, a little metal, uh, like a straw. And he started putting it into Roddy's chest and he kept going down and down and down. And finally, he made a couple of clicks. Click, 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 click. You hear that? And I said, yeah. He said, that knife would have went another quarter of an inch. He'd be dead right now. That's why Corvello stopped him bleeding. And so he said, but he's okay. I'm going to stitch him up and you get him home. I'm going to get a prescription for him. And I said, well, we're off. I said, we have a, a 10 days off from our, our this is our last one. Right. So I'm uh, glad this is happening now. So I get uh, back home. Tell, I call my wife on a pay phone. We didn't have cell phones yeah. at all. Roddy got stabbed. She says, oh, no, is he okay? Said, yeah, he's fine. But I'll be home a little late. But we'll, we'll get Roddy to his uh, condo. And, so I, I get home and she's asking me questions. And finally, I said, I'm going to go up and, and get ready for bed. So as, a, as most men do, I started emptying out my pockets. And all this, while this was going on, I had that knife in my hand. Gee. And because I had to help Roddy, I stuck it in my pocket. Yeah. Never thought about it. I never gave it to the police officer. So I got it in my hand. So I, I said, I so, so I ran downstairs. In the kitchen, got a little baggie, rolled it up, put it on top of a uh, closet shelf, and said, I'll take care of it when we get back, because we were getting ready to go to the airport at this yeah. time. So years go by, and we're, we move up to uh, Connecticut for a WWE, and, and I'm packing stuff out of my closet. <laughs> There's a knife. And I said, oh, my God, I still have that knife. Wow. So uh, I still have it. Wow, that's unbelievable. Yeah, I, I, I thought, brought it out in the uh, the show, the uh, hidden treasures. Yes, I told I the whole that. story yeah. I just told you, but they never heard it. Wow. Well, yeah, we've yeah. got an exclusive here on the yeah. on the after chat. Did he still want to talk to the guy? I think he still wants to he talk. Still to wanted. To talk I think to he's him. probably Sergeant. probably is talking. <laughs> Before I let you go, uh, are we okay on uh, memory on the uh, camera here? Uh, we lost Antonio Inoki recently. Yes. Tell yes. us. Well, I had many, many matches over Japan with uh, Antonio, and it was always a, a pleasure to, to wrestle him. Uh, he was such a gentleman in and out of the ring. Uh, you would get
get done wrestling and he would uh, send his uh, guys over to thank you and do whatever they could for you. And most of the time when you would leave, we all had sponsors back then, we would go to a, uh, a beautiful restaurant here. You always pick up the check and make sure we're about a steakhouse. Yes. Yeah. And he was just a, a wonderful man. Uh, I'll miss him. Rest in peace. And, and uh, may uh, may I see you up there one day? Not too soon. So, all right. Thank you for the after chat, Sergeant Slaughter. At ease, sir. Right at ease. Place. Keep watching, and that's an order. Don't make. Uh, Bill after and I come up before you. That's it. We'll see you at the matches.